Hey folks, Ed here from Brain Pulp TV with what is not just the first Let's Play of the channel, but the first Let's Play I've ever done personally. Now, I've played a ton of games, a ton of games in the past, and I tend to talk to myself when I play, but I've never actually recorded that experience and showed it to anyone else. So this is going to be new for both you and me. Now, as you can see above, I am going to be playing Soma, which is a horror game created by the makers of Amnesia, which is an amazing game that I've never played. Now, the reason why I can say it's an amazing game yet have never played it is because I've watched a lot of playthroughs and even just as a viewing experience, I thought it was incredible. Now, I have nothing against the horror genre because I love horror movies and I love actually watching people play horror games. The reason why I personally tend not to play horror games is because... When I get immersed in something like a game, I can get startled pretty easily. Even if it's a game that's not intending to startle me, like uh, Minecraft, for example, if a creeper suddenly pops up, which is really not a scary looking creature, I can still get pretty rattled. So f to play a game that's actually meant to scare me and meant to shake me up uh, is something I don't usually try to put my heart through. But because it's launch and because it's the week of Halloween, I figured when in Rome, scream like a little girl. That makes no sense. Anyways. We're going to see just how scary this game is, so let's get to it right now. Okay, now I haven't even started a game with this yet. Oh, reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, doesn't go away. Are you okay, no. Simon? I think you're bleeding. Oh, that, that's nothing. It's just my brain can't stop bleeding from the accident. <laughs> how is that Here, nothing? take this. No, that, that's for later, for the scan. It's green. Green? That's... Actually, I need to tell you something. Simon, please don't make this weird. No, no, it's not like that. <laughs> I don't think he's making it weird. Why now? Who's David Munch? Why is there never enough time? For what? <laughs> oh, okay, it was a dream. Which is obvious, yeah. Uh, objects can be interacted with using the button. Should I answer it or should I like drink some coffee? Oh. Fine. Yeah, I'm up. Hi, Simon Jarrett? Yeah, that's me. My name is David Munchie. We spoke earlier. The brain scan. I remember. Are you alright? Yeah, yeah, just a bad dream. Are, are we still on for today? Yeah, that's why I'm calling. I wanted to remind you to drink the tracer fluid I sent you. It'll help me capture a better image of the damages. Don't worry, I, I I got it somewhere. Okay, great. Well, see you in a couple of hours then. Okay, see you soon. He's pretty blasé with his brain fluid if he's just got it somewhere. Okay, so normal movement keys. And pick up the pillow and what, R. Oh, okay. Rotation. Nice. Very nice. Where did I put the tracer fluid? And there, a book. Wow, that's gr gruesome looking. Oh, view text using. Ah, hooked. Ooh, let's see. Mark and Diane Miller have finally caught a break. They've managed to save up enough money to take the family on that vacation to Hawaii that they've been talking about for so long. But as the sun sets over Waikiki Beach that first day, Mark and Diane's paradise turns into a nightmare as swimmers are caught in thousands of thin strings stretching from somewhere below the waves. Slowly, swimmers are pulled, screaming into the dark water. Desperate to get out of harm's way, their seven-year-old son, Charlie, is caught by the vicious tendrils. Suspenseful. Mystical and absolutely terrifying. Hooked will pull you in. Nice, so that sounds like some fish gets a revenge. No. Okay. Is there anything uh, you can use? Okay. Oh, nice. Now, is that brochure? Can I. Can I read this? Come on, radioactive tracer fluid, where are you? You know, I haven't started looking for it yet, pal. Relax. Ooh, what's that? Okay, I don't think any of these things are important, so. Been through here, let's be tidy, close up the drawers. 
And hitting the space part makes you jump. So that's good to know. Uh, check the messages. Hey Simon, it's Jesse. You working this weekend or what? I knew there was something you were doing. Was it this weekend or next? Anywho, just shoot me a mail or something. Love you, miss you, mean it. End of messages. I swear, that guy has the memory of a goldfish. I even uh, sent an email to remind him, didn't I? Love you, miss you, mean it. That's a that's a nice way to send off. I'm gonna try that next time. You know, uh, criminals like people who like burglars who are good at burgling. Um, apparently, they open when they open drawers in a house to sort of rummage through them. They open from the bottom first and work their way up. That way, they don't have to worry about this drawer blocking off the next one, so they can just like you know it's it's super quick. I only know that because I watch like crime shows and stuff. Ooh, I can vacuum. Um, not because I have personal experience with that sort of thing. So, and a book. Oops. Uh, you know what? I forgot how to. How do you read? How do you read what's on there again? Oh, you push it a second time. Okay. See, widely praised is one of the most comprehensive yet accessible texts about the anatomy of the human brain, its functional and our perception of consciousness. Its function and our perception of consciousness. Find out how your brain is dependent on its body, why the brain is simply not a computer, and a multitude of other interesting facts that will make your head spin. No pun intended. This edition also includes two new chapters about the development of the brain and how it affects our behavior in different stages of our lives. Okay, but apparently you can't open the book. You can only look at the book. Anything interesting here? I can grab the camera. Ooh. Photos. Oh, is he like a foodie? There's, it's going to be filled with pictures of his food and, and his bugs. Okay. Nothing on that one. I, uh, I'm not sure how good I will be at a playthrough that has a lot of stuff where you can pick up and examine because I tend to try to examine everything uh, in games like this, so. Get well soon, love mom. Oh, thanks mom. Nothing on the back, huh? Okay. Yeah, get well soon, love mom. Yeah, I got that. I got that. Hmm, okay. Not sure if that's important or not. What do we got in the drawers? Ooh. Cinema Verte, the ultimate movie magazine. So he's like a movie buff, I'm guessing. Japanimation, bigger than ever. Stunts versus CGI. What's a bottle movie? No idea. Massive recoil. Flameless execution. <laughs> flameless. Flawless. Flawless execution. Flameless. In theaters, December 13th. I never got to see one. Anything interesting in here? Uh, let's see. Oops. Did not mean to do that. There we go. Downtown accident kills young woman. Yikes. Friday, April 10th, 2015. Toronto. Oh. This place takes place in Canada. Cool. Yesterday, a driver... A little... Yesterday, a driver distracted by her children ran a red light, causing her to blindside a car in the intersection of Bloor Street and Spadina Road. The mother and her children, traveling in a robust SUV, were left bruised but largely unharmed. The other party was less lucky. As the car crashed into the passenger side, Ashley Hall, 23, oh, from the beginning, sustained devastating damage and suffocated from blood trapped in her lungs before the ambulance arrived. Her friend and driver, Simon Jarrett, who is us, 26 survived, but with complicated results, believed to leave him with permanent brain damage. The driver of the SUV, whose name has not been released by police, claims it was an accident and practically unavoidable, except for the fact that she could have paid attention to the road. Uh, 50% off. Nice. Nice. And this is... Oh, wait. There's a date on that. I don't think it's important, but... So I'm, I kind of... I quit dropping it. Friday, April 10th, 2015. So it's current. Uh, before I do that, oh, let's see what we got here. More food pictures? Nope. Nothing on the back of that one. Nope. I guess that's him and Ashley. Ashley is either his girlfriend, I'm assuming, or what? Simon Jarrett, Pace Laboratories, 
or laboratories, depending. Dr. Aaron Pika. Uh, da -da -da. Anything interesting there? I don't think so. Nothing on the back. The Grimoire presents Robin McConnelly. And, oh, from the, the book, the book, the book. Um, hooked, right? Meet and greet book signing. Books, comics, and board games. Oh, so the local comic shop. Very good that he's keeping that, uh, that as, is that just him and his feet? Yeah, okay, in the sand. That's nice. Can you get the posters? No. No. Okay, anything else? Oop. Oh, lights. Lights would help a little bit. Let's go to the email. Uh, from David Munchie. Neurograph session, April 30th, 2015. Thank you again for participating in our research. The scan will be performed at the Pace Laboratories in Toronto. But since, oh, it is, so it is definitely in Canada. Uh, but since we are guests, our access is a bit unpredictable. I will try to schedule a scan session for Saturday. I'll get back to you when confirmed. Sincerely, David Munchie. Munchie? Munchie. Yeah, we'll call him Munchie. Uh, from Aaron Pika. New prescription. 28th April 2015. Dear Mr. Jarrett, I'm happy to hear your headaches have become less frequent. Your latest tests show your brain is slowly recovering, but it's still too early to tell how well it will adjust to the damage. The bleeding will continue... Oh, so that goes back to the little beginning part. The bleeding will continue over the coming months, at least, and you will need to come to the hospital a few times to drain the cavity to prevent the blood from building up pressure. Since excessive stress could be fatal, I've written you a prescription for... Parazosin to help you with your nightmares. Please read the instructions and medicate accordingly. Try to get a lot of rest, and I will see you next week. Sincerely, Dr. Aaron Pika. And wraps. Okay. Oh, I forgot to hit send. He forgot to hit... Well, you do have a brain injury, dude, so you got a better excuse than I do most of the time. Um, hi, Jesse. Since you probably forgot, here's me reminding you that I've got that doctor's appointment tomorrow, i.e. I'm not coming to work. This means you need to make sure you're actually on time to open the store. And please, unpack the boxes behind the counter. They are starting to become a workplace hazard. Also, books tend to sell much better if they are put on the shelves where people are actually able to see them. Good luck. You'll need it. Simon. Ooh, sassy. I'll send that. Sure you want to send it? Yeah, I want to send it. Can I do anything Better else? Late than never. You betcha. Plenty of games. Nope. Nope. Okay. So I'm guessing... Okay, so he works in the comic store? Because it's mentioned there and there. So yeah, I guess he... He works in the comic store. Ooh. Summer's oh. coming. Oh. I hope it's I a good one. Okay. Um... Yeah, I thought for a second there, I thought this was a sign of the store. I thought he lived right outside his store, which would have been great. Really great for him. Ooh, that puts some light in the room. That's kind of nice. Oh, and even more light. Yeah, why not? We'll waste the... Oh, okay. Can I open the window? Nope. Okay, so I'm assuming... He left the toilet seat up again. Wow, that went down slow. Can I flush? Nope. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming the drugs are in here. Mm, that is not the drugs. Oops, sorry. I'll pick that up later. Is that the drugs? Not the drugs. That's the soap. Uh, I won't make a dropping the soap joke. Let's turn on the lights. And we'll get a shower. I don't want to keep the doctor waiting. I'll shower when I get back. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure the doctor's going to appreciate the fact that you thought of him and not showered before you got there, so... Uh, okay. Anything in here? Nope. Oh, did I not open the bottom one? So he must be like a camera nut, too, because there's lenses all over, over the place. Okay, so there's no drugs in the bathroom. Oh. Oh, can I turn right. this on? Watching TV gives me headaches now. Thank you, brain. Oh. Sorry about that. Didn't want to give you a headache. Massive recoil. Oh, the first one! Oops. Did that again. Pick it up. Massive recoil. John Hugh is a corrupt cop working in Hong Kong. One day, his life is turned upside down as he meets Amber a mysterious foreigner who is kept prisoner by the Golden Dragon Triad. Getting ready to go rogue, 
Oh, get ready to go rogue. For it's time to go against the triad, the police, and the supernatural forces of the underground. Get ready for massive recoil. I thought I heard something. Did you guys hear that? That's weird. Okay, I thought I heard something. Uh, I can't read any of those magazines. Uh, why would he put his drugs in here? There it is. Oh. Okay, so he did put his drugs in here. Uh, to use an object you have acquired, pressed. Okay, and one of the items displayed on screen. Uh, caution. Okay. Let's throw caution to the wind and guzzle this down. Mmm, tasty. Like milk, but the taste... It's like sucking on a penny. <laughs> well, it is medicine. Let's clean up a bit. There we go. Uh, he had some burgers. Nothing but fast food. Should buy something healthier on my way home. That's a good idea. Good idea, because you've got like a brain thing going on. You need to stay healthy. Uh, let's see. Remind Jesse. Pick up meds, flowers for funeral. Okay. Ooh, flowers for funeral. That's kind of shitty. Oh, let's see. Let's see what he got in the mail. Uh, Simon Jarrett, and you. Can you open it? Can't open it. I can take the keys, though. Okay. Um, am I missing anything before I go? I took the drugs. Got my keys. Turn off the lights. Save energy. And I think that's it, right? Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Oh, wait. More. Can I open these? Yeah. Oh, I'm not doing it like a burglar would. Nope, nothing interesting. Okay. Let's go. Can I move? Nope. What about your ass? Uh, answer. Jesse. Hey, Simon. I got your email. Just wanted to wish you good luck and let you know I got you covered. Thanks. I should be able to come to the store after this scan. Don't sweat it. I got Matt and Chris helping out. Matty from SNL? Uh, guess you didn't hear. He's coming in full time. Work in the comic section. That's Ashley's job. Yeah. Well, you know. Forget it. I'm not doing her any favors by leaving an empty spot. Not like she's coming back. Well, good luck. Hope they find a way to reverse the whole, you know, dying thing. <laughs> dying thing? You're the worst support ever. <laughs> what should I say? I'll see you later, Jesse. Don't burn the place down while I'm gone. Over and out, buddy. Don't find me in a All the Jesus. You know, there's a, a pretty woman over there, there's a cool guy over there, and you sat beside the, the muttering, creepy dude. You know, my earphone is digging into my ear. Get great sound from these, but holy crap, they're uncomfortable. Hello? Dr. Munchie? This is not the doctor's office. You are kidding me. They don't even have the light on for you. Where is everyone? I thought this place would be busy. They haven't even, like, painted the walls yet. They got a... creepy clown painting, though. Ah, oh, yes, Canada. I had no idea this game was set in Canada. Oh. Someone driving away. What? Like, seriously, he's coming here for treatment, and this place isn't even built. It's... This would be kind of like a... They're doing some sort of brain scan, and he's in a... He's in a doctor's office... That looks like it was attempted to be put up yesterday. So I, if I was him, I'd be a little worried. Ooh, water. Oh, 
Nice attention detail. No cups, no cups. Okay, no one's here, so let's snoop a bit. Oh, turn off the lights. There we go. Turn those back on. Uh, open the windows again. God, the creepiest doctor's office. What do we got? Computer. Okay, scan now. Paul, where are you? We've got a few hours. I got hold of Simon Jarrett. Let's do this. I saw your laptop in the reception. Are you already here? Call me ASAP. It's from Munchie. Also from Munchie. Hi, Paul. Talk to Pace about using the lab this week. I've managed to book the scanner for tomorrow morning and again on Friday. It's not a lot, but they said we could use the empty reception area. Oh, okay. That kind of makes more sense than why it looks so shitty around here. Uh, as a kind of office. It would allow us to use their computers to run the models. And also, if a time slot opens up, we can get in there and use the scanner rig right away. I thought we could run some tests tomorrow. We could do a scan of each other. Oops, sorry. We could do a scan of each other to learn the equipment. Okay, test it out on yourselves. That's kind of nice. It's supposed to be pretty easy. On Friday, I'm hoping Dr. Aaron Pika will send somebody over. She has a patient that was recently in a car crash. Should be interesting. Nice to know I'm interesting. We're locked out. I found some extra time in the lab today. Unfortunately, nobody told us about the code changes. So I called security, talked to Professor Wee. Wee? Yeah, Wee or Why? Talked to Professor Wee to have him vouch for our project and finally got hold of someone, some honcho over at Pace's legal department that could re-grant his permission to use the lab. I'm not allowed to repeat the code in mails. That's a weird way of saying it. I thought I'd... I'm not allowed to repeat the code in mails or texts emails or texts, but I'll leave a note or something in, in case we forget. Paul. Okay. That is very good security, by the way. Do not send passwords out through email or text, but do write it down somewhere right near the computer, because that's going to make things... Oops. Super secure. Uh, open those up again. Okay, so it's not on those. Haven't checked in these yet. Ah! Nope. Oh, okay, what do we have here? Wow, okay. Put your scalpel away. The brain can heal itself. The brain has an amazing transformative quality, a plasticity that allows it to compensate and even heal itself, explains Paul Berg, a graduate student in neuroscience at York University in Toronto. It is this quality that... Excuse me. It is this quality that Berg and his colleague David Mushi, a student of computer science, are hoping to encourage. It's about getting the brain to do the right thing. <laughs> do the right thing. And we hope to accomplish this with simple things like exercise, therapy, and light medication. But Munshi and Berg are not looking for a miraculous... Panen... Panacea? Panencia. I know there'll be comments if I screw that up. It's about finding the optimal treatment for each patient. They start out recording something called a Nakajima neurograph. It's like a picture that indicates direction, says Munchi, instead of a static brain scan that the neurograph can tell us where your brain is going. Oh, good, more text. Excellent. Trial and error. It's not a long forecast. It's about milliseconds. But with the right computer model, Berg and Munchi can can then administer all kinds of treatments without risking actual harm to the real brain. We could try to give your brain an overdose of painkillers while running a marathon. Okay, I'm sure that would be useful somehow, suggests Berg. It's just a computer model. We were able to fail treating you a million times over only to find the right way. And when they do find that optimal treatment, that's when they apply it to the real patient. It's still in the early stages, but their project has caught the attention from PACE Laboratories or laboratories, who has promised to assist them with both equipment and workspace. We are very fortunate to get all the support, says Berg. Now we just need to get out of the limelight and actually do the work. That's a good attitude, actually. Anyway, okay, enough of that. Uh, I'm still looking for the code. Oh, wait, I didn't even check to see if I can't... No, I can't use the phone. Okay, oh. Uh, page 56. Week for right length, 2501. Anything on the back? Nope. 2501. Okay. I'm assuming that's the code I'm missing, unless I'm missing something here. Can I turn the computer off? Nope. Uh, 
Oh, I can move the trash can. No, nothing in there. Okay. The hell was that? Oh, okay. Uh, ah. Let's see. Two, five, zero, one. Is that right? Yes! Well done, me. Hint, press and hold shift while moving to run. Why do I need to run? Why do I need to run? Oh, wait. Oh, and when you miss shift and hit control, you crouch. Uh, shift. Okay. Oh, yeah, I do run. Okay, that's nice. What have we got in here? We got a locked door. And we got uh, James coming in on Monday. From 1 to 12? That seems like an awful long appointment. Okay. And let's see. Can I get in the fire hose? Nope. Cannot get into the fire hose. Uh, first aid kit. Can't get into the first aid kit either. Okay. Good to know. And apparently this room has exploding stuff. And I can't get into it. This one's open though. Let's see what's in here. Is there a light switch? Yes. Light. Um Oh, what's this? Oh, never mind. It's nothing. That's nothing. Okay, anything in the newspaper? No. Nothing in there. Nothing in there. And we've got papers and orange juice and a syringe. Yeah, okay. Don't know why that's just sort of laying around. You would think that would be put somewhere a little safer. I used to work in a lab and don't really remember us just sort of like leaving syringes laying around, but to each their own. And there's just a motherboard uh, laying on the ground. Bunch of wires. Beeping. Nothing. There's nothing in here. Nervous system. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. I don't see anything of any importance in here. Uh, hopefully I didn't miss anything. We'll move on. I think there was another another door. Oh, wait. What's this? Anything? No, just a bunch of charts and graphs. Charts and graphs. Yeah. There we go. Ah! Oh, hi. Didn't hear you come in. Simon Jarrett, right? Dr. Munchie? Well, it's uh, just Mr. Munchie, but I'm working on it. <laughs> Actually, you're helping me right now. Mr. Munchie. Is this part of your thesis work? Yeah. It's a study I'm doing with my colleague, Paul Berg. We hope to design a gentle way to work with brain reconstruction to help people like you. Oh, did you uh, take the tracer fluid? Yes. Yes, I did. Great. Well, we can start whenever you're ready. Excellent. Excellent. I am getting some sort of brain scan treatment from someone who is not a doctor. So, um, that seems promising. Oh, is that a cell phone? Is that like a really, really old cell phone? Okay. And anything here? Nope. Can't use the tablets. Papers? New. Please, have a seat. Oh, hush you, not the doctor. Um, what Come on, thoughts? let's do this. Just sit down and we'll get started. Oh god, you're pushy. So, what exactly are we doing? We're going to do a scan of your brain. Then we build a computer model of it and bombard it with stimuli. The program will help us to quickly iterate your treatment plan until it's fully optimized. In short, develop the perfect treatment for your condition. So it's not just a study, this will actually help me. Well, I should hope so. Otherwise, this would be a huge waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm dying. Okay. Into the chair. Looks very comfortable. Okay. Thanks for warning me that was going to happen. What exactly did happen? Alright. Let me just get this out of the way. You are Simon Jarrett, correct? Right. Toronto, Canada, David Munchie. Born 1988, July 16th. Right. Flat neurograph, version 6. Good. 
All files in order. Will this hurt? It's just a scan. It'll hurt about as much as getting your picture taken. Indians thought cameras would steal their souls. That's so. Well, let's hope they're wrong. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> oh, he's Say dry wit. Well, it's a good thing I'm not prone to seizures. That was bright. Oh, here we go. What happened? Uh, okay. Hello? What the Mr. hell did Mucci? happen? Can I move now? Oh, I can. Okay, good. Uh, did something go wrong? Let's find a light switch. This isn't funny. Oh. There we go. Oh, there we go. That's better. Mr. Munchie. What the hell is this place? How did I get here? Okay. I can figure this out. I just need to stay calm. No need to make things worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because things could probably get worse. I'm assuming things, that's what the whole game's going to be. It's just going to be one giant progression into worseness. Uh, can I get into any of these? Nope, apparently not. What's this? Keypad? Nope. Can't do anything with the keypad. Uh, service console. Insert Omni tool to access. Do I have an Omni tool? I do not have an Omni tool. This is, does it say Omni Tool Docking Station? And that's a toolbox. A toolbox. Which won't open. Okay. So, there was another computer. There's the computer. Uh, automated unlock terminal from service console. Okay. So, I need. Okay. So, I need to go the other way. Does this do anything here? And this is just like a fire extinguisher. Okay, that's just a fire extinguisher. Uh, so this is the service console, but I need an Omni tool. And I don't have an Omni tool, so I can't use the service console. So let's just. Won't be getting out that way. What about here? Oh. Hello. Okay, I don't see anything outside. Oh, wait, there's a grate. So. Maybe, is there something up here? No? Okay. Uh, blood is always a good sign. It's always a very good sign. What the hell? Oh, a door. Oh, which is controlled by this and then... Okay, so never mind about that. Let's move that chair out of the way. That was bothering me. Uh, a cup of coffee. Anything in here? Ah. Okay, it's... That was not big enough. Oh, this should be big enough. There we go. That's the stuff. Well, this is a creepy place we found. Get back in, good. Okay. Now I still need. I need to look for. I need to look for an Omni tool. Correct. Yes. I need to look for an Omni tool. So let's. Okay. You know what? No. Let's go. Let's go. We're gonna go a little bit further. We're gonna go a little bit further. Let's. Glitchy. Um, no, you know what? Yeah, no, no, no. Let's just stop it here because we're we're running 
around half an hour, maybe a little bit over it. So um, if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking it as well to leave a comment. Let me know maybe something I could change, some advice you have, because this is new to me. So I will take any good advice to heart and I promise I will read through all the comments and uh, any feedback will be much appreciated. I am going to be recording several of these back to back to back, so I may not be able to act on some of the advice till episode four, but I promise I will read all your comments. In the meantime, we are going to be trying to do a giveaway away uh, within a month. We are going to try to hit a certain subscriber goal by the end of the month. And at the end of the month, we are going to give something away. It's some sort of game related item. I know one of the items we have is a magic the gathering product. But if you're not into that, we're going to try to have an alternative as well, too. So we will have more information on that by the time this video comes out. In the meantime, thank you guys very much for watching my first ever and Brain Pulp's first ever Let's Play video. Take care, everyone. Enjoy your day. And I will see you all very soon. For those of you wondering, I don't wear a hat because I'm bald. I got a bit too much party going in the back right now. I gotta get my hair cut.